Hello again. What's going on, everybody? So it's been a minute. Been uh, about a month, probably a little longer than a month. And uh, the 40K fever is still going strong with me. I'm still very much so uh, big into Warhammer 40K right now. And I still feel like making videos about Warhammer. So as you can tell by the title, this is going to be sort of an intro guide. Uh, I haven't quite, yeah, to be honest with you, it's time that I'm making this video I haven't quite settled on a title but you can tell by whatever I ended up making the title uh, this is gonna kinda be like an intro guide to get people into the lore of Warhammer 40k I did my video which was my previous one Warhammer 40,000 explained for new fans well after watching that video uh, if you wanna dive into it more or maybe you saw a different video somewhere else online that kind of gave you a brief rundown of what Warhammer 40,000 is. If you're looking to dive more into it and get more into the lore, I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to tell you what resources you should seek out. Now, as you can probably imagine, there's uh, Wikia pages, fandom, fandom Wikia pages online that you can read. And that's all well and good, but it tends to be really cut and dry and kind of bland. If you want something with a little more flavor, a little more, enter something that's a little more entertaining, you could always look for uh, some people on YouTube, so like myself, except with much higher production values to their channel. They do, <laughs> they do really good like lore videos. Some of them even like they get together, they do voice acting, they act out uh, some of the more prominent, impactful. Uh, in events from Warhammer 40k's long amount of lore like there is well over 10,000 years of fictional content and, and lore and history and backstory to Warhammer 40,000 I'm going to say that again over 10,000 years of 10,000 fictional years uh, of content of story so uh, my um, that being said my what I give you guys here in this video is going to be pretty uh it's going to be like the tip of the iceberg. It's going to be like just enough to like get you into it to where you truly feel like you know what's going on. So the first thing we're going to start off with here, and by the way, I'm going to tell you guys to read books. Uh, if you want to get them on Audible, if you, you can go online on Audible and they have so many Warhammer 40,000 books on there, the audiobook. So that's, that's typically how I tend to read them. I get them on Audible, and if I'm on like a long drive in the car, or if I'm at the gym, I just throw one of those on and I listen to it. So, rather than just watching YouTube videos of people telling you what's going on in Warhammer 40k, and rather than just like reading the Wikia page, I think you, unless you just hate to read, you will find you will get a lot more entertainment and enjoyment out of actually reading the novels from Black Library and getting the story that way. So to start things off, the first thing that I got to recommend is the Horus Heresy. Now this is a book series within a book series. All of Warhammer 40,000 can be described as a book series. All of the books from Black Library about Warhammer 40k. If it's got the 40k logo on it, then you can it can be part it's it's part of the 40k series. The Horus Heresy is a book series in and of itself. There are I want to say I know there's for sure over 50 Fought, not 15, 50, 5, 0 uh, novels in this series. And then there's also short stories and novellas that are in it. A lot of it, it's hit or miss. A lot of it is so-so. A lot, of, Some of it's crap. And then there are some real gems in here as well that are really entertaining and really good. Uh, you can look up guides online as to like what orders to read this series in. Because it is not published in chronological order. Like the events of this book, of this series, they were not released in chronological order. So if you want to read it like in the most chronological order possible, you can look up a guide on how to do that online. Just Google uh, how to read Horus Heresy in chronological order. You will, you will find a guide on how to do that. And then you could also find a guide on like what to skip. You know, you could find YouTube videos where people like rank... They do like a tier ranking of the Horus Heresy novels, and they tell you like what stuff is good and what stuff is not. Only thing you gotta watch out for is with those those tier rankings, 
a lot of times they're just ranking the book on how good it was, not necessarily what event in the Horus Heresy it's talking about. Unfortunately, there are some events that happen during the Horus Heresy, and they are very important, very prominent events, but they're, the books talking about them are not that great. So it, it's a little hit and miss. You got to do a little more research into it, but if you truly want to start learning Warhammer 40,000 and the story of it from the beginning, this is where you start. You start with the Horus Heresy. Now, once you move past the Horus Heresy, you enter into this, like, like I said, 10,000 fictional year time frame that is mostly just fluff because the events of the Horus Heresy set the stage for this very dark, nasty setting that Warhammer 40,000 is in. That's what it is. It's a very dark, nasty, war-ridden setting. Everything sucks. Uh, I think the only the only place in the galaxy that anyone would poten potentially desire to live would maybe be Ultramar. I think, you know, and that's not to say Ultramar doesn't have its problems, you know, fucking Tyranid invasion and shit, but uh, and then recently a Death Guard Plague Lord invasion. So, like, Ultramar still has its problems, but, uh, but yeah, most of the setting of Warhammer 40,000 is grim and dark and nasty. The Horus Heresy sets that up. And since then, the story has basically just been, here's this fictional setting, and everything in it sucks, and it's just war and carnage and death everywhere. And they never, and I don't know how long it took them in real time to kind of decide, and by them I mean Black Library and Games Workshop, I don't really know how long it took them in real time to kind of go, hey, maybe we should move this story forward. But for a while there, a very long time, it was just stories, stories about war and battles the different factions fighting each other. Now, I am an Imperium fan. I'm a loyalist. So this list of stuff that I give you to read is going to heavily introduce you to most of the different facets of the Imperium side of things. If you're looking to get into like the Eldar or the Orcs or the Necrons, you're going to have to find a different YouTube video. But I can get you on the Imperium stuff. So after the Horus Heresy, I feel like a lot of people's good jumping on point is what used to be called the Ultramarines Omnibus, but it's now sold as the Uriel Ventress Chronicles. Uh, he is an Ultramarine captain of the fourth company. And these books are okay. I, I do like Uriel Ventress as a character. I do like his stories. Uh, my problem with these, with these books and the author, Graham McNeil, is the way he writes them is you know, each one, each different book is set, it's a different, it's Uriel Ventress and his company of ultramarines, and they're going off to fight in a different conflict. Sometimes they're fighting the the Dark Eldar, sometimes they're fighting uh, Necrons, sometimes they're fighting Tau, it doesn't matter. It's, each one's a different story with different shit going on. What Graham McDeal does is within each one of those stories, he feels the need to devote entire chapters of the book to a character that is not an ultramarine. It's not Uriel Ventress, and it's not any of his other ultramarines in his company. It's a character from the world that they happen to be fighting on in this book. And that is annoying as shit, because I would be reading these books, and I'd be somewhat... I'd be decently invested in what's going on with Uriel and the Ultramarines, and then I'd finish a chapter, turn the page, and I'd get it this... I'd have to read through this other chapter about some random character who's... He's just in this book for these few chapters, and then he never shows up anywhere else in Warhammer 40,000, and he doesn't fucking matter at all. So that's kind of annoying. Uh, I did manage to read through... I can't remember which one it was. I want to say it was the, the book where they fight the Tyranids. It might be the second novel, for the second Uriel Ventress book. I did manage to read through that entire book by skipping those chapters and just focusing on the chapters that were about Uriel and the Ultramarines. And that made the book a bit more enjoyable. But for a very long time, this was kind of like people's... Like Games Workshop and Black Library really pushed these books. And it was most people's like first venture into Warhammer 40k novels. A lot of people have read these. 
I do recommend you check them out because Uriel Ventress is a, he's become somewhat of a staple character in Warhammer 40,000 and especially with Ultramarines being as prominent as they are right now in the story, the overall story. It's a good place to start after the Horus Heresy. And if you end up liking this character, uh, they it seems that they're going to be continuing him. There is a more recently released novel uh, called The Swords of Kalth, and it's a new Uriel Ventress novel. It takes place in what I'm going to call modern Warhammer 40k, modern Warhammer 40,000 times. And you'll understand what I mean by that at the, by the end of this video. But just suffice it to say, between this one right here that's on the screen and the previous ones that I had displayed, there is a significant like time skip between them. So just keep that in mind. Now, uh, in terms of kind of exposing you guys to multiple different, not just different factions within the Imperium, but like factions within factions, we're going to check out another Space Marine chapter here, and this is going to be the Space Wolves. I love the Space Wolves. They're kind of a guilty pleasure. Uh, they are space Vikings that have a giant wolf fetish. Like, they're, uh, it's exactly what it is. They're space Vikings with a, with kind of a wolfy fetish theme going on. And, uh, yeah, the main character is Ragnar Blackmane. That's the guy here on the screen. And he is a 100% complete and total badass. Uh, these books are great, and what I like about them is basically they don't have that flaw that I mentioned about the Ultramarines Uriel Ventress novels. Every single one of these books is about Ragnar, and pretty much damn near every chapter is Ragnar-focused. He's the character, that's what these are about. And what I really like about this series is this very first, This is these are these are the two omnibuses that are out. And each one of these contains three novels. You can see down here at the bottom, like the first one has the novels Space Wolf, Ragnar's Claw, and Grey Hunter. The second omnibus contains the novels Wolf Blade, Sons of Fenris, and Wolf's Honor. Uh, in the very first novel, Space Wolf, you, the book starts out, Ragnar is a young kid living on his home planet. And it takes him from being a young kid, normal human kid, and it shows him being recruited by the Space Wolves and put through the training and turned into a Space Marine. And you don't really see that in a lot of other 40k books. This is one of the few times you get to see and actually, I say see, you actually get to read the transition from like a normal human into a Space Marine. Now it is the Space Wolves chapter and their recruitment process and transformation process into a Space Marine is very signature and unique to the Space Wolves. So for instance, like the Ultramarines, they don't recruit and train and turn people into Space Marines the same way that the Space Wolves do. This is specific to the Space Wolves, but it's still, you kind of, you get to see it. So I thought that was cool. And then once again, if you like, you end up liking Ragnar as a character, which I don't, I don't see how anyone can hate Ragnar. He's just too cool. Uh, there is another one, like I said, just like with the Ultramarines. There is a more recently released Ragnar Blackmane novel, and it's called Ragnar Blackmane. And it's a more updated novel. It takes place in nearer current events in Warhammer 40k. So the series does continue. The series does continue. And uh, it seems like Games Workshop and Black Library are dedicated to this character. So we will be getting more content from him. Uh, as far as Space Marines go, I think I had one more in here that I was going to recommend. Uh, so this series is simply called the Space Marine Battles series, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's Each book is about a particularly famous battle conflict that some Space Marine chapter took part in. Each one is about a different Space Marine chapter fighting a different enemy during a different conflict. And that's all they are. They're just, they are stories about great battles. They're kind of filler fluff content, but some of them tend to be really, really freaking good. I read the one that was called Armageddon, which is about the Black Templars fighting the orcs. That one was amazing. I've also heard really good things about, uh, let's see if it's on here. Well, it does not seem to be. I've also seen, uh, I've heard really good things about the one that's about the Space Wolves uh, that features the Space Wolves. So uh, not a bad series, definitely something to check out. And it will give you a variety of Space Marine chapters to read about. Not every Space Marine chapter has gotten like 
the same treatment but like the space wolves of the ultramarines did where they get full omnibuses and there's a there's a big important character dedicated to them but so if you want some of the other chapters like the crimson fists or the black templars or the white scars you're going to ha kind of have to go look through this series and find a book about them in there and then as for other space marine chapters though that have gotten like full-on omnibuses the Dark Angels, I call this the Dark Angels omnibus, it's not actually known as that, it's called The Legacy of Caliban, but it's, once again, it's an omnibus, it's three novels in run, three novels in, in one, and they're all about the Dark Angels, and there's a lot of cool backstory and, like, hidden secret type stuff to the Dark Angels uh, that you find out about in here, and it's just a really cool book series, the, the Dark Angels are a very cool chapter of Space Marines, and... I recommend it. I would check that out as well. If you're if you're liking Space Marines and you're just trying to try out all the different chapters, definitely give this one a look. So outside of Space Marines, we're going to move into a little bit different side of the Imperium. So the Eisenhorn Omnibus. This is written by author Dan Abney. Dan Abney, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name. But this series of books, the Eisenhorn books, is very popular and for good reason it's exceptionally well written and the character is fantastic uh the inquisitors in warhammer 40k are kind of like secret agent federal government agent spy type people almost and a lot of, some of his stories in the eisenhorn omnibus they're almost written like mystery detective spy novels in a way so if that's kind of your shtick, you might really enjoy this. I've, I have yet to find someone who read the Eisenhorn books and did not like them. So if you want to check out that facet of the Imperium side of Warhammer 40k lore, go for it. It's probably, you're probably going to like it. And then for the last bit of like the filler period in that 10,000 year time frame I talked about, we're going to take a look at the Imperial Guard. These are your basic, just normal human soldiers. They're not space marines. They're not inquisitors. They are your normal human people who are still out there on the front lines fighting for the Imperium. And the first and foremost one of these series that I'm going to recommend are the Caiaphas Cain books. These are the three Caiaphas Cain omnibuses that are out there. That's him, the main character, Caiaphas Cain, on the covers. And they are fantastic. And this is probably these are probably the closest thing you're going to find in Warhammer 40,000 fiction that is like almost a comedy. Caiaphas Kane is a very funny character in that he is an Imperial Guard commissar and he's been attached to the Valhallen, uh, what are they called? Valhallen, not Valhallen, Ice Warriors. But the, yeah, it's the Imperial Guard regiment from Valhalla. And he is basically a lazy coward. Like, don't get me wrong, he's been through all the training and whatnot and he knows how to fight. He knows how to handle business, but he is a giant, he's a, he's a huge lazy coward. And his entire goal is to get himself as far away from combat and battle and war as possible. He would, he would love to just get like a nice little cushy administrative job in an office somewhere, but he keeps finding himself in these crazy situation where he's up against some of the Imperium's most deadly foes. And he, somehow he always manages to come out on top looking like a like a fucking hero because of this the imperium kind of blows him up to be this like legendary hero this champion of the imperium and that gets him thrown into more combat situations which just annoys the hell out of him uh it's not like a straight up comedy but there are definitely moments in here that will make you chuckle and laugh it is also still full of good action and he's probably what my I wouldn't say he's my favorite Warhammer 40k character, but he's definitely in probably the top three. So if you want something a little little less grim darky than most of Warhammer 40k and you don't really want space marines either, this is a good thing to look at. Next up for Imperial Guard, another pretty famous series, and that's the Gaunt's Ghost series, once again by Dan Abney, Dan Abnett. Same guy that wrote the Eisenhorn series. Uh, he's probably... Dan Abney is probably Black Library's best writer that they have. I'm going to go ahead and say that. He probably is. Uh, and he's written a ton of Gaunt's Ghost books. These are uh, four different omnibuses right here on the screen. And these are, th I want to say these are the most recent editions and covers that you're likely to find online for sale or in stores. And 
they're pretty good. They are. He is a colonel commissar, so he's a commissar just like Caiaphas Cain, but he actually also holds the rank of colonel, and just another bunch of action-packed uh, military sci-fi stories. They're pretty popular, and they give a good look into the guard. the 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 thing that you the thing that's interesting and fun to read about the Imperial Guard is when you're reading when you're reading Space Marine stuff. The Space Marines are all about it. They are into this shit because they're a little bit brainwashed to be all like fighting and dying on the battlefield, killing the the foes of the Imperium is the best way for someone to live their life. Not everyone in the Imperial Guard feels that way because everyone in the Imperial Guard is just a normal human. So a lot of them are just like your basic run-of-the-mill people, and they're just trying to get through the day. Like, this is just their job to them, and... You know, you do have your badass, like, gun-toting characters who are all about it, but, like, Caiaphas Kane, for example, he's not. He's just a normal guy, and that's that's what you're going to get out of a lot of the Imperial Guard stuff. It's just, it's it's the perspective of the normal humans who are in the Imperium military. So, I think for my last suggestion, Imperial Guard stuff is going to be a relatively new novel called Krieg. Uh, this is, gives you a lot of good insight into the, the Death Corps of Krieg, which are becoming a pretty popular Imperial Guard regiment. Uh, however, portions of this book, there's like, a, there's like two stories running in this book. One of them takes place in the past, and one of them takes place in like what I, what I said I was calling like modern 40K times. So it might be a good idea to read this book later on when you're a little more into 40K and you have a little more knowledge about the lore and the story and what's overall going on. So now we're going to get into what I said happened uh, several years ago. Uh, this this happened like early 2017, game, late late 2016, early 2017. Games Workshop and Black Library decided, you know what, it's time to move the story forward. So there was this three-part story that it came out in Games Workshop's, I believe it was, it came out in their White Dwarf magazine. They're not novels. The story was it, it got it, it was piecemealed out in uh the the magazines the the white dwarf magazines which is games workshop and black libraries like monthly publication about it's everything lore as well as the the tabletop hobby and it started off with the first chapter of it which was the fall of cadia which is what you see over here on the far left abaddon the despoiler who is like the grand champion of chaos undivided he launches his 13th black crusade and unlike the first 12 black crusades that he launched uh the 13th one actually achieves a good amount of success they actually destroy cadia pretty much and cadia falls and Cadia was like this like frontier bastion of imperial defense. And Cadia falls, and Chaos, without spoiling too much, Chaos gets its first really strong foothold in real space, in imperial Imperium real space, uh, for the first time since the Horus Heresy. Moving on from there, you go into the Fracture of Biltan, which introduces the Eldar kind of side of things. They start to take an interest in what's going on because Chaos, having a foothold in the galaxy, is not good for anyone. Whether you're human, Eldar, Tau, doesn't matter. It's not good for anyone. So they kind of take an interest in things, and it all come in, it culminates in the third part of the story, which is Rise of the Primarch, which is due to the help of Belisarius Call, who is a... Archmagos tech priest of Mars and the Eldar, they actually managed to revive and restore Rebute Gwilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines. So that was their that was a big step forward in the story for Warhammer 40,000. For the first time since the Horus Heresy, Chaos has a strong foothold in the galaxy and a Primarch, one of the Emperor's sons, is alive, walking, talking, and running the Imperium. So, in other words, it's almost like the Horus Heresy slash Great Crusade is back on. That was a huge step forward in the story, and a lot of a lot of books and lore have come out since then that are relevant. Like, I, they're not just they're not that stuff I mentioned before where I was talking about like these are just tales of conflicts and battles that were fought during this 10,000 time year time frame no the stuff that came out since this stuff 
is relevant and it's actually moving the plot forward. So if you manage to track down copies of these magazines or maybe you just find a way to read them digitally online and get the story from there, after that, what you're gonna wanna check out is this series, which is the Dawn of Fire series. This is five books and they kind of take, they take place at different parts of the galaxy and they cover different things going on, but it all interconnects and it all has this cohesive theme to it. And you definitely get the sense that we're building to something. So that's gonna be something to check out. If you want an additional little bit of a uh, fluff from that era post uh, Gwilliman's return, you could check out the novel Indomitus. Uh, it's a good, it's a pretty halfway decent uh, Ultramarines versus Necrons novel. Uh, it's, it's nothing it's too terribly special, but I liked it and I recommend it. And then last but not least, certainly not least, you're going to want to read the Dark Imperium trilogy. The Dark Imperium trilogy is, the main character of it is essentially Rebute Guilliman, the Primarch. And it it, it covers his efforts to restore the galaxy now that chaos has got this foothold, bring the Imperium back, get its shit together, get it back in order, and it culminates with him going toe-to-toe -to -toe with his uh, traitor brother, Primarch Mortarion. And I'm going to tell you this right now, guys, regardless of what you think about the Ultramarines, regardless if you think they're basic and they're the poster child, uh, doesn't matter, uh, they actually manage this guy, Guy Haley, and I want to say just overall, the overall Games Workshop and Black Library team, they've managed to make Gwilliman's return actually entertaining, and they've actually managed to write him as a pretty compelling character. And the third book in this trilogy, Dark Imperium God Blight, it ends with a banger. Like, Gwilliman's, Gwilliman's showdown and confrontation with Mortarion is nuts, and the implications in that book of what goes down have a lot of people really excited for what's to come in the story. So, yeah, those are my recommendations of just some some of the books and lore to kind of get you started. I understand that, like, even though that was a very, I, 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 I can see and understand why that is a short list. To you guys, though, that might seem like it's very long. A lot of those were omnibuses, which contain each contained three novels. And then I also threw in there the Horus Heresy, which is, like I said, I'm, it's 100% over 50 books. It might be over 60. But like I said, you don't have to read all of you don't have to read all of the Horus Heresy. You could you could look up guides online to try and track down the important bits, read those, and then when it comes to that 10,000 year time span of just kind of fluff, I hate I, I hesitate to call it fluff because fluff makes it sound like it's really not important and not that good and not worth reading. But the stories in there are good. Ragnar Blackmane's Space Wolf books are very entertaining and very good the dark angel stuff is really good the eisenhorn stuff is really good it's just not it's just stuff that's happening things don't really start to pick up and really kick into high gear until Gwilliman's return but that doesn't mean you should skip over that stuff can you skip some of it absolutely is all of it relevant no but it's just some recommendations the horus heresy though is definitely where you probably want to start at least get the big events down, you know, Horus, the, 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 the first trilogy, which is Horus Rising, False Gods, Galaxy in Flames, and then after that, you're going to want to read, uh, I, I want to say it's, it's the, the book is called, the title of the book is Fulgrim, but I'm not positive about that. You want to read the, whichever one it is, you want to read the book that contains the Isvan 5 Massacre, uh, you want to read probably a thousand suns and prospero burns and then it all culminates with a eight or eight or nine book sub series called the siege of terra which they are still in the process black library is still in the process of life of writing and completing and the goal of the siege of terra is it's going to culminate with the emperor's duel with horus and all that shit's going to go down so I'm very excited for that. I hope this list helps you guys. I hope this video helps you guys. If you guys have any more questions, uh, leave some comments down below. I will do my best to answer them. I hope this helps you guys out. I hope more people get into Warhammer 40,000. And that's about it. Until next time, guys.